I, I think when we're uh, talking about this, this whole legal system, this commercial world uh, that we're surrounded with, we, um, we can realize that uh, this has a lot to do with uh, going against the scriptural counsel that says not to be conformed to the world that we're around. Interestingly, the world of legal works in forms. So the minute you're filling out a form, you're conforming. Uh, so a lot of trouble comes when you start to conform um, and uh, especially when you're allowing your, who you are in reality uh, to take on that form uh, to be something that you're not. So uh, the uh, question is, could someone really quit money? Is that possible? Well, there's an interesting read and I don't know how many people have ever run across this, but there was a... Uh, a book was written, surprising, about a, a man who quit money, you know, left his uh, money in a phone booth and walked away. And the, the interview, um, and I recommend uh, always do the read because I, I preferred the, um, the uh, interview that was uh, put up on the net uh, so you could actually, you know, follow the conversation. Uh, there is, uh, I think there is some videos that are on it, but I preferred the actual interview that was done in script form. So it's called The Man Who Quit Money. And ironically, uh, someone could even write a book about that, and this man didn't receive anything from it because he quit money. So he never took any of the monetary proceeds. The, uh, I'm going to just uh, read briefly the interview, and uh, it starts off uh, basically... Earlier this year, and he's talking to uh, Daniel Suella, uh, and uh, he's being interviewed uh, by, uh, a, uh, I believe it was uh, Joshua Becker, so you can look that up. And he asked him some questions, so here's the beginning of it. He says, earlier this year, your story was documented in a book titled The Man Who Quit Money. I opened this interview with a brief introduction. Am I missing anything here, Daniel? Anything that I should be adding to help us get a better understanding of who you are and the life you have chosen to live. He says, I don't care for the statement. Daniel proudly boasts that he does not take food stamps or government handouts because it can be construed that I put myself above those who must take food stamps or government handouts. I don't judge those who do. I merely mention that I don't take government assistance for the sake of those who might think I'm living on their tax dollars. I do boast about having few possessions and no money because it's ironic fun to boast about nothing special. Uh, wild creatures, after all, have few possessions um, and don't have money, and it really feels like no big deal, and to boast about what the rest of our commercial society debases. I will add that I do make a small exception for taking government handouts. I use the public library to maintain my blog, website, and do emails and read books. This does cause ire in people searching for loopholes in my lifestyle. In my blog comments, a woman once responded to their anger by declaring that she pays taxes and doesn't use the library and that she donates all her library time to me. Then they were quiet. Uh, many thanks so much for taking the time for this interview. I find it interesting that so many of the articles highlighting your story include uh, something similar to this line, Suella, which is Daniel Suella, came from a good family and has been to college. He was not mentally ill nor an addict. His decision appears to have been an act of free will by a competent adult. So far, uh, so uh, for starters, you are clearly not a crazy man, correct? And then he answers, a crazy man does not think himself crazy, so my opinion on the matter is meaningless. People will have to judge my sanity for themselves. But it would be nice if we lived in a world that considered it crazy to cause harm to ourselves, others, and our environment, or to praise those who do cause such harm then we'd have to say we live in a truly crazy civilization. A sane society would consider crazy to kill living things and destroy food and water supplies in order to amass something that no one can eat or drink, like gold, silver, and money. It's crazy to sacrifice reality to the idol of illusion. The thinking that led to uh, your journey into willful moneylessness evolved by degrees during your travels. Could you share with us some of the fundamental beliefs that have evolved in your life uh, that led you to make this decision to give up money entirely. It says, my first thought of living moneyless came when I was a child. In my evangelical Christian upbringing, I wondered why, if we were followers of Jesus, we didn't practice his teachings 
namely giving up possessions and doing not for the sake of reward, money and barter, but giving freely and receiving freely. When I left a home for college, I studied other religions and found that all the world's major religions uh, teach giving up possessions and doing not for the sake of reward. If all the separated witnesses are saying the same thing, it must be true. Ironically, few practice the one thing they all agree upon in word. What would happen if we actually practiced this stuff, I thought. My dad also took us camping a lot, and I was a nature freak. I couldn't help but see how perfectly balanced nature was, and it ran on no money. Why then couldn't we? As an adult, I thought it, thir I thought it through thoroughly. Nature's economy is a pay-it-forward economy. This means one sows, another reaps, and an fit For example, a bear takes a raspberry, and the raspberry bush demands nothing in return. The bear takes with zero sense of obligation, zero guilt. The bear then poops somewhere else, not only providing food for soil organisms, but also uh, propagating raspberry seeds. You never see two wild creatures consciously bartering. There are no accountants worrying what the bush will get in return. This is exactly why it works, because nobody knows how it works. There is no consciousness of credit and debt in nature. Consciousness of credit and debt is knowledge of good and evil, valuing one thing and devaluing another. Consciousness of credit and debt is our fall from grace. I think you need to do a little bit of a read into this. It's uh, actually well-worded. I may not agree with everything that's in it, but, uh, but I, I do believe that he's very sincere and, and he did explain some very good key points. So uh, worth the read, The Man Who Quit Money, um, and uh, I hope you learned something from it.